Hi all, Ben here from East West, bringing you another video in our Python for Finance for Python Beginners series. Now this video is part two of our Mark Minervini trend template project. So in the last video we laid out the logic to check for a single stock to see if it met the criteria for a stock to be in a trend. Now in this video we're going to build out the code so that we have a program that can check all the stocks in the S&P 500, or any list of stocks for that matter, to see if it meets the criteria. Now, it was when I first started using large loops like this that I saw the power of Python over Excel. Now, maybe an Excel guru can write some macros or something to do the same thing that I will show you here, but there is a reason the financial industry uses Python and not Excel. Now, I really hope this whets your appetite and gets you thinking about your own projects to try. Now, remember, all I'm doing here is laying out some basic stuff which I'm hoping you can take away and use yourself in your own programs. So with that being said, let's get started. So for this video, I'd suggest having the code we previously used open as there will be a lot of copying and pasting. Now you can type it all out again, but having that copy handy will save you a lot of time. So let's open a new notebook inside whichever folder you have chosen to contain these programs. So I'll fill out all the headings and import the libraries which are identical to the last program so you can copy and paste those in. So the next step is to use date time in exactly the same way. So you can just come into here and you can just literally copy this cell and you can just paste it in and run it. Now next we need to get the stock list we want to use. Now in this case we're going to use the method covered in a previous video and simply download the S&P 500 stocks from Wikipedia into a data frame. Then we're going to convert the symbol column into a list. And in this instance, we're going to name the list codes. Now at this point, we know there are two error codes uh, within the list. So we could insert this cell to fix them, but I'm going to comment these out. Now you can come out, comment out an entire cell by highlighting all the text and then hitting control and forward slash. Now the same keystroke will uncomment everything as well. So if you highlight and you can uncomment. Now in this specific example, we already know about the error, but what if we're using a new list and the errors were not known? What happens to the program? We will see in a few steps time and I'll show you how to work around that. But for now, I'm just going to leave this cell commented out. Now the next step is we need to create something to store the end results in. Now we could use a list, but in this case I'm going to create a new data frame. So to do this, I need to name the new data frame, which I'm going to call meet. And then I need to type in pd.dataframe and make sure that the frame has a capital F. Now we need to add in the columns that we want to have in this data frame. So I've chosen to display the code of the stock and the criteria so we can double check at the end that everything is correct. So if we run this cell and call up the data frame that we've just created, we can see here we've got a blank data frame. So in the next step we're going to go we're going, to, we're going to be doing uh, the loop through the list of codes to see if each stock meets the criteria or not. So let's get started on that cell. So here we need to use a for loop as we have seen in previous videos. So here we can say for i in codes, which is basically now telling the program for each iteration or entry or i in the, in the list codes that we have created, then do the next steps. Now, as a side note, you don't actually have to use i where it's placed. You'll see a lot of people in other videos type something more like this for code in codes. Now this makes more logical sense I suppose, but the program knows what you mean when you type for something in a list. So I think we'll just stick with what seems to be the norm, which is to sort of more type it this way, and then that way you won't get confused when you seek out other videos to learn from. So we have the for loop started, and now we need to tell the loop what to do. So it's at this point we can go back to the old code and do some more copying and pasting. Now the first thing we need to do is download some data. So if we can literally copy this. 
Now we just need to hit enter and we can see here that we've got an indent which is of course what we want. So if we paste uh, straight in what we've just copied, you can see that the heading, which we can leave in, it's, it's personal preference, but you can leave that in. But you can see now that the this line is not indented. Now we don't want that. So if we just put the cursor there, we backspace just to bring it more in line. And then we just need to hit tab. So that way it's lining up the way it should. Now, one thing to change here is we're not downloading Apple. What we just need to type in here without the apostrophes is code. Okay, so what we're saying here is for code in codes, download whatever code you're looking at to start with. And, you know, you put that there. So if the first code was Apple in the list, then it would simply place Apple in here as it starts to step through the loop. So now the program will have downloaded the data into a data frame as per the original way. So now we simply need to add the columns. Now again, copy and pasting will help you out a little bit here. And as all the steps are exactly the same. So once again, just make sure that all the indentation lines up. Now that we have the data frame with all the relevant information, uh, we're just going to format it a little bit. So let's drop the columns that we don't need. So just quickly, the next step is probably a little bit superfluous. We don't really need to do it, but I haven't really covered it. So it might be a good time to cover it. So let's just change the order of the data frame DF that's been created. And let's just change the, the orders of the columns to match what we've created up here in our blank data frame. So like I said, not really needed, but if you do want to reorder columns uh, anyway, that is how you would do it that will take all the columns and just put them in the orders that you want to see them in. Now, sometimes it can be a good idea to have everything sort of the same and lined up. Um, it, it just helps the program to avoid confusion when we start appending results. Now, one thing important to note here is make sure that all your data frame columns that you've named here are the same as what's up here. OK, if we keep everything the same when we start appending, see if these columns are different to these columns, then the program's going to start to run into problems trying to append to this new data frame. Uh, so just to avoid confusion, just try to keep everything exactly the same. So next we need to add in all the if statements. Now this should be pretty straightforward to do via a copy and paste, but once again, take note of the indentations. So here I've just copy and pasted them all in, but just note that we're still lining up the start of every line of that original indent, which is what we want to do. It's, it's important that it's the way that the program reads the code. So if the indentations are off, then the, the program uh, won't like it and you'll get an error. So next we need the finishing if statement. Now this one's a little bit different, but we do start off the same way with this line. But now we want to do something extra. We want to tell the program that if the stock meets the criteria, then we want to append to our blank data frame. Now this way at the end, we have a data frame populated with stocks that meet the criteria. And you can take that and go on and do some further analysis on those stocks if you choose. So to do this, we need to type in the name of the data frame that we created, which of course is meet. And then we need to say equals meet dot append uh, sorry meet dot append and then what do we want to append we want to append the last row of the data frame that's been created via the steps above because that's that's the one we're interested in so we need to type in we want to append from df and then we want to append iloc square bracket minus one so that will give us the last row and that will append the information from the last row into our new data frame and so to finish that off we can then put in some f strings to give us messages about the stocks as they're being downloaded and processed so that's pretty much it for the loop so just to recap what's going on here we're telling the program um, that for the first code in the list take that code go through this process okay and at the end if the stock meets the criteria then take the information from that stock 
and place the details into a new data frame then go back to the top of the loop and then go to the next code the second code in the list go through the process do the third code in the list go through the process for all 503 codes in the list so before we run this cell let's just turn our attention back to this cell here um, that we commented out so remember that this cell was the one that dealt with the known errors so seeing as how we haven't dealt with the errors let's run the cell and see what happens to the program when it hits those codes that we know are going to produce an error so we just simply run this cell pardon me there is an error I've created an error because I've just realized I've missed a step so this is what we actually need to do here we need to say df symbol okay now the df the symbol that we're checking will be equal to the code sorry I for some reason I've missed my notes I've missed that step so we need to put in code df symbol equals code now the code of course is whatever we're downloading uh, here so that will simply insert the code into the data frame so that way when we append we've got a symbol that so we know which code we are talking about so with that being said let's rerun this and it should work this time yep so now now what's happening here is the program is each one of these okay is one loop okay so it's going it's doing one loop and then it's going back it's doing the next loop it's doing the next stock it's doing the next stock so it's stepping through each stock it's downloading each stock checking whether or not uh, the conditions are met and if they're not it's just putting out this um, message saying you know that this Google does not meet the conditions and it's moving on to the next one now you can see this is spewing out down the page now don't worry eventually what happens is the cell gets so large that the program will auto scale and it, it'll open a new little window uh, within the cell so we'll see that happen in a minute now also keep in mind there you go also keep in mind that I am living in a first world country with third world internet so this will happen much more quickly on your machine so at, okay so this is what we we're waiting for now it's hit brk.b we know that's an error code but the problem now is that it's broken the loop it's it's put up an error message um, and it's basically stopped working so if we were doing the Russell if we were doing 3,000 stocks in the Russell and we got down to 2,800 and then there was an error well that would be a pain because it's done a lot of downloading a lot of work before it's hit an error message so what we want to do is let's let's look, take a look at how we get around that so let's go back up here so what we need to do is to get around these error messages is we want to insert a try accept loop so this is going to be like a little loop within the loop so let's take a look at how we do that so if we come back up here to the start if we just go to the end of this line if we just hit enter maybe just hit enter one more time so you've got a bit of space now we need to type in try so you can see that's in green and then a colon okay now every time the way to think about this is every time you do a colon you need a new indent so this try is indented off four but now all this needs to be indented now don't pa don't panic the way you do that is just highlight all the code like this so once that's all highlighted just hit tab and just hit tab once okay now everything's indented so try is indented off four and this df is indented off try so to finish off that try loop what we need to do now is we'll just give ourselves some space here if you just backspace now we're in line with this indentation we want to come back one more so you just do that via another backspace and here you need to type in accept and see how that's gone green and then you just need to type in with a capital E exception except you need to spell it correctly <laughs> okay except exception with a colon all right so now we need to put in I'm just going to print I'm just going to put an F string in here now just as an example you can see here that print is in that bright red that means that the indentation is no good so what you'd need to do is just come here and maybe you just need to backspace one yeah oh actually 
that will put that in that's got no indentation that needs to be indented so once it's back in line if you just hit tab now it'll have the correct indentation okay so that was just a little example of these little knickknacks you just find along the way but if it pointed out to you at the start hopefully it makes it a little bit easier so now what we've done is basically we've put a new loop in so we're going to say for each code in the list codes try to do this step try to do this and if you can't for some reason if there's some sort of error then just print out this line and then just move on to the next step so what that'll do is when it gets to those error codes it'll just recognize that it can't do anything about that and it'll just step through to the next one so let's let's rerun the whole program again okay and away it goes again so we're just going to give this a bit of time to step through all the data and then we'll see what happens okay so here you can see it's got to the, the brk.b that the error data and it's just gone okay there's, there's an error here this is what we we asked it to print out but rather than just stop I'm gonna go okay that's an error thing I'll just put that aside and I'll move on and I will keep downloading so this will take some time keep in mind we are downloading two years worth of data for 500 stocks so it's not going to happen instantly it'll it'll happen quicker on your machine than mine but you know just be patient it'll happen okay so I'm after some time that's now step through and completed now you'll know it's done obviously because that this stops loading but because this cell now has a number in it it just means this whole cells run so that's it we've downloaded all the stocks in the S&P 500 we've skipped over the two that that were problems that created an error and now we're ready to call up our data frame that contains all the stocks that met the criteria and here they are in fact what I might do is just clean this up a tad so sorry here we are so we just 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 did some rounding there just to clean this up so you can see here that we've got everything we need to actually the one thing we don't have is we don't have the 30 percent 75 percent but maybe if you wanted those go and, go and put them in you, you should be able to work out how you how you put those columns in for those values but what we can see here is you know the close is above the 50 day ma tick 50 days above the 150 tick above the 200 tick etc etc uh today's 200 moving average is higher than last month's 200 moving average tick so what we can see here is that all these stocks are now that they meet the criteria and we've got something here that we can work with you can go back and do some analysis figure out if these stocks are legitimate if you want to trade them whatever you might want to do so so um my hope is that you, you've sort of seen this and this is sort of starting to to uh, spark up your imagination about what sort of things you could now step on and do with this so one thing that i might work on in a future video is work on a program that actually tells us the first day that one of these stocks becomes um, becomes um, it, it meets the criteria on the first day so that you know because we don't know how long these stocks have met the criteria but if we can catch one on day one well that might be the day we want to we want to enter it and really try to get in on the ground floor so you know lots of different things you can do here so so that's it for this video um, stay tuned for the next video uh, and we'll, we'll step on to do some more stuff so thanks for watching